Hey brothers, this is Justin with Masonic Improvement. Thank you for joining me today. In this video, we're going to talk about fundraising, one of my favorite topics. So fundraising, as you may know, is an instrument made use of by most operative lodges, and they use fundraising to keep the dues they have to charge every year at a uh, very low level and to offset the operating cost of the lodge and any uh, charitable activities they may engage in every year. In a best case situation, say you have a lodge without a, a high operating cost every year, then you may do one or two fundraisers a year, or you may have a lodge where due to whatever factors may be in play, you have a really high operating cost. And fundraising becomes a huge focus of that lodge so they can keep their doors open. So I've already talked about dues before, and I'll put a link below as I usually do. And so if you've been following me for a while, you already know how I feel about dues. If you haven't been following me, I'll just tell you that I think dues need to cover at least the operating cost of your lodge every year. And the reason I say this is because it, let's just look at it from a uh, big perspective here. If the dues you charge every year are high enough to cover the operating cost of that lodge, then every dues paying member of that lodge is contributing to support the operation of that lodge for that year. If you're relying on fundraising every year, then what you end up with is a handful of brothers, a very small percent, maybe 5% of your overall membership of your lodge doing all the work to keep that lodge operating every year. Now, you tell me what seems to be the most reasonable in this case. And I'm also going to put forth that that small amount of brothers that is doing all the work to keep that lodge operating is going to burn out very quickly. And what you're going to end up doing is losing your core membership over, over a period of time. And you see this with most lodges if you're a member for, for very long. When you first join, there'll be a core membership. And of course, you're going to have some, you know, unfortunately, some of the brothers are going to pass away and move off and stuff. But what, what else you're going to see is members that, you know, are still alive still live in the same area, but they've just dropped it after a while. And often the case is just burnout because you have a few people doing all the work. Um, you know, there's appreciation, there's pats on the backs and things like that. But at the end of the day, you're, you're asking too much from a few people just to do fundraising. So long story short, in my opinion, fundraising to maintain the operations of that lodge for a year is, is a serious no-go. You should not be doing this. And if the operating cost of your lodge is so high that you cannot reasonably charge um, dues to cover that, then you need to really evaluate um, some things. Namely, you know, the location of your lodge, what you're spending money on every year, and really, depending on how much they would actually end up breaking down to per member, the dedication of your membership. Because here's the thing, if the members of your lodge don't have enough pride in their building and what they're doing in the community and in the fraternity itself to pay a little bit extra to maintain the operating cost, oh geez, to maintain the operation of that lodge every year, then what are we doing? We're, we're dropping the ball somewhere at some point. This also kind of begs the question, if I don't use fundraising to operate the lodge, can I use it for charitable causes? And I, I'll be honest, I'm more comfortable using it for charitable causes than I would be, say, to maintain the operating cost of your lodge. But the thing is, in both cases, it's it's almost, I don't know. It's it's if you ask me, if if I if I'm doing a fundraiser and then I raise a thousand dollars, and then I turn around and give it to a a charitable foundation or, or someone in need and say, you know, and slap the Masonic Lodge name on it and say, here, here's all the money that's been donated by these Masons. I'm being a little bit dishonest with myself. I'm being a little bit dishonest with the community and, and really anybody that, that is, is acknowledging what I'm doing because I, you know, the Lodge did not give charity. We, we took other people's money and then we turned around and said, here, here's money from us. And that's, that's, you know, we put work in, but that's not that's not really charity. The Masons, we're not out anything. We just turn around and give it away again. And we did it in our name, so it makes us, I guess, look good. Um, it does benefit these people. These are people that might not have received that aid otherwise. And that's a good thing. But 
should we, I mean, should we really be, be doing this? And it's, it's just creating more work. And all you're doing is, is turning around and giving money to other people and saying you did it, you know, saying you gave, gave of yourself when you really didn't. To me, charity means, you know, I took money out of my wallet. I wrote a check and, and I decided where that money went based off uh, my values and the need of the people that were asking. And, you know, I'm out money now. You know, I gave a hundred bucks on my wallet. You know, I'm missing a hundred bucks, but they're benefiting from it. That is charity. Now, if someone gives me a hundred dollar bill and I turn around and say, here, be sure you tell everybody I gave you a hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, people go look at me like I'm some kind of, you know, a narcissist or something. And, and they're, they'd be right. So why is it okay if we do that as an organization, but not as individuals? And if it, the truth is, neither case is really okay. So I'm not a huge fan of fundraising. And I understand that, that you know, a lot of brothers feel if you didn't talk about fundraising, you didn't talk about the minutes and lodge, what would you talk about? And that's probably another story for another day. But just keep these things in mind. And so first things first, you know, really evaluate the, the dues in your lodge. If you have to do fundraising to, to get by, then you need to reevaluate those dues. Now, if you're doing fundraising for a charitable cause, um, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, it's better than just using it to, op to operate your lodge. You know, the community should not um, front the bill for your operations every year. But, you know, I, I, I respect the fact that it's really good to help other people. And I respect the fact that, you know, charity is good. You know, char charity is amazing. It's done a lot of really good things in my community and other communities as well. But, you know, are we really giving of ourselves if we're just doing the fundraising? That's really the question. Personally, I'd rather find people in need and, and, and contribute to their cause, you know, as an individual. That's what we're taught to do as Masons. I don't know why every charitable cause has to have a square and compass left on it. So, you know... Anyway, so that's all I have to talk about fundraising for now. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a issue for me that you know I, I really do have concerns about, and I realize that every lodge is going to do their own thing. But you know, it's really just one of those things we got to start evaluating: is it, are we doing the right thing by fundraising all the time? And I'll be honest, before I leave, I know I said I was about to leave, but a lot of people are joining the fraternity and realizing that in many lodges it's just operating like a service club. Like I talked about in my uh, video, why I left Freemasonry, and and they're they're turning away because that's not the authentic experience. That's not what Freemasonry was to them when they joined. You know, that's not the what they had in their mindset. Sorry, or just you know in their mind when they came in. So the reality of what most lodges are doing did not coincide uh, did not coincide with what the reality of Freemasonry should be. So, I mean, when you get all these young people and everyone's excited that they're joining and then you have a few business meetings, you know, we're talking about, you know, fish fries and barbecue and, and pancake breakfast and you don't see them again after three or four months and you wonder where they went. You know, that's where they went. Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, my brothers.